of the Quran. And in the 28th Jews, we began with a surah which is called Surah Al Mujadala. And Surah Al Mujadala is about three and a half pages, which has about around about 22 verses of the Quran. In the surah, the word Mujadala is meaning that somebody who came to plead for the case. Somebody who came to plead or somebody who argued for their cause. And what happened in Suratul Mujadala was that firstly the themes in Suratul Mujadala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about specific laws related to marriage and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives reference to his knowledge also. And what was to happen in the days of the pagans and in the days of ignorance when a man didn't want to divorce his wife and he didn't want to so he didn't want to separate with her but he wanted her also to go through a difficult time there was a certain word that they used to use and the meaning of this was that they would say to their wives you are to me like the back of my mother so this was not yet determined whether it was a talaq or not whether it was a divorce or not because it was in between because now you are saying that you are in, you are you are not allowed to me like my mother but there was no wording that said that this was the case of talaq so this lady by the name of Khawla bint Tha'laba who was the wife of Aus bin Samit came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with this argument and up until then there was no revelation of this system of using of, of, of divorce saying to your wife these specific words and so Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to her that up until now there has nothing been revealed in this case and she pleaded her cause and there are other narrations which mention that she was in her old age she had already exhausted all of her wealth she had already exhausted all of her time with this person. You know, that is why she was pleading her case, because where do I go to now? And while she was pleading this case, Nabi Wasallam did not have the answer. And in that scene, these verses were revealed. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي زَوْجِهَا وَتَشْتَكِي إِلَى اللَّهِ And her complaint and concern and her stress was directed ilallah this is it when we are going through difficult times in life don't focus and guide your pains to human being human being is another creation just like you watashtaki ilallah and she focused her concerns and how she, what she would plead what she felt in her heart the trauma that she was going through, the depression, the concern and worry, tashtaki illallah. She guided it towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wallahu yasma'u tahahu rakuma. Allah says that I am listening to your discussion that you are having. The discussion that you are having inside and the discussion that you are having with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answered her and he gave the solution so Naisha says I was in my chamber when she uh, when she came and spoke to the Prophet and I could I could slightly it was like I could just hear her whispering I couldn't make out what she was saying to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam but imagine Allah says Wallahu yasma'u rakuma. but Allah was listening attentively to your discussion and what you were talking Yesterday we read in Surah Tul. That's why I say these small surahs, they link up. Allah says, we are closer to you than your jugular vein. We are closer to you than your jugular vein. Do you remember when we recited in Surah Ghafir? Wallahu ya'lamu khainat al-a'yun wa ma tukhfi sudur Allah knows the signs that you make with your eyes, what you're looking at. And what your eyes, the message that your eye is sending to your brain, Allah knows that whole process. We could look at somebody and he could look at you and you thinking that this person is looking at me with passion, but he couldn't be looking at you with anger. <laughs> Allah knows that whole process. 
And Allah knows whatever we hide within our bosom, whatever planning that we have. So Allah listened to her complaint and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the solution. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called this type of actions. And that is why Allah called this type of actions where you want to make your spouse or your partner suffer. Or you do things that makes it difficult upon them. We all know that definitely if we can save anything, the worst is to go into divorce. But Allah forbid and Allah save us and save all our marriages. But if we reach that point, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us to keep our character intact. Things become very nasty, very ugly. And you will never even say that this person was somebody that I said once upon a time, I love you with all my heart. And you looked at that person with compassion and love. But sometimes it turns out almost like you can murder that person. What has went wrong? Ya ayyuhal insan, ma gharraka bi rabbikal kareem. What has brought you to that where you want to make the next person suffer? Qawlam ma'roof. Say kind words. Depart, separate with kindness, with compassion. Many times the children, they also go through difficult times. So the Quran addressed, the Quran calls this munkar. It's evil. Wazura, it is falsehood. This is how the Quran terms these type of actions. So this was Surah Al-Mujadala. The amazing part is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Surah speaks about two types of things in the themes. One is, وَإِذَا نَجَيْتُمْ the, 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 the hypocrites and the, and, and the enemies of Islam always used to find them secretly you know, making plans, trying to, you know, forever speaking in secret and planning and plotting. And Allah says that no, when you are planning and plotting and whatever you're doing, Allah is the third. If you are two, Allah is the third. If you are three, Allah is the fourth. In your planning and whatever secrets you are holding. And it's almost as if, look, Allah brought marriage and then he brought the secret planning and his knowledge. That know that even whatever you're saying, Whatever secrets, whatever you, whatever plans you're making, know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is aware. So this was the discussions in Surah Al-Mujadala. Continuing, we come to the next surah, which is called Surah Al-Hashar. And in Surah Al-Hashar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deals with the expulsion of the Jewish tribe by the name of Banu Nadir. There were three type, th tribes when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa migrated from Mecca to Medina, he found three tribes in Medina. There were many tribes before that, but three were prominent. Banu Quraidha, Banu Nadir, and Banu Qaynuqa. These were the three tribes that were in Medina. Banu Nadir, they had a pact with the Muslims, and after that they tried to plot the assassination of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and in this way, Allah says to them that you all would have never known their plotting and planning again. <laughs> Allah is showing us his reference to his awareness. And Allah is telling the believers, you all wouldn't have known that they were plotting against you all. And thus caused the expulsion. I want to come to two main events which took place. One is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the muhajirun and then about the ansar. The muhajirun لِلْفُقَرَاءِ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ الَّذِينَ أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ The muhajirun, the, 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 the poor muhajirun, those that made hijrah, أُخْرِجُوا مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ They were driven out of their homes. وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ And their wealth. Some of them had businesses. Some of them had whatever they had. They were driven out of, 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 of their homes. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they left. And the sole purpose for them going out, يَبْتَغُونَ فَضْلًا min Allah. They were wishing and desiring for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They left their homes, they left their wealth, because they had a choice. If they had to turn around from Islam and reject Islam, they could have stayed back in Makkah. But they chose to choose the path of difficulty 
and they continued with their journey towards Medina and left everything behind. Some of them left their families behind. Yabtaguna fadlam min Allah. They, one is, they were searching for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number two, وَيَنْصُرُونَ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ And to assist the Prophet, uh, and to assist the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Prophet, listen how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الصَّادِقُونَ Those are the truthful ones. You remember when we were reading in Surah Al-Ahzab, these are the stages of believers. إِنَّ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَالْمُسْلِمَاتِ We start off as subservient, Muslim. وَالْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ then Muslim, There's a difference between a Muslim and a Mu'min. A Mu'min is where you get into the higher stage of piety. Those that they, they are ready to give everything away for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are ready to sacrifice anything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are on the Siddiq level. And then it carries on. Sadiquna <laughs> sadiqat wa sabiruna wa sabirat. We'll read about those that make sabr. Those are the sabirun. Wal khashi'ina wal khashi'at. Wal mutasaddiqina wal mutasaddiqat. Wasa'imina wasa'imat, those that keep fast every Monday, every Thursday, every wasa'imina wasa'imat, walhafidhina, these are the stages. So we see here, ula'ika humus sadiqun, the muhajirun. Then the ansar, they were waiting for the muhajirun. Walladhina tabawwa uddara wal imana min qabl, yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim, wala yajiduna fi sudurihim. مِنْ حَاجَةٍ وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصًا اللَّهُ أَكْبَرُ وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ Look at how Allah SWT explains the Ansar. They were waiting for the Muhajirun. تَبَوَّأُ الدَّارَ They made their homes, they split it into half. They made their, their homes ready for the Muhajirun. They wanted to split everything in half. They were ready to give whatever they own, split it in half. And yuhibbuna, no takalluf, no, 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 no takalluf. You know takalluf is doing it with a bit of difficulty. Abarruhum quluba, their hearts were pure and clean. It was easy for them to sacrifice anything for the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It was, it was no problem, easy. They didn't feel no type of difficulty. Yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim. They loved those that traveled towards them. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ And they, in fact, Allah is speaking about them. Remember Allah is the one who knows everything? The heart, Allah says their hearts were at such a level that they were ready to oppress themselves for their Muslim brothers. And then there is an incident, few incidents that mention. One is that the one Sahabi, Nabi Wasallam saw this one muhajir who was really hungry. He hadn't eaten for a few days. And then Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked, who will take him to, the, to, to his house? So one of the Sahaba was ready to take him to his house. He brought him home. He asked the wife, any food? She said, there was just a little bit of food left for the kids. We do not have nothing to eat tonight. So he said, try and put the kids to sleep and then off the lamp and then we will act as if we were eating with our guest. We will act as if we are eating. So the children cried off to sleep. They slept without eating. And then they brought the food and he made like he was eating and the guest ate to his full and then he left and went away. The next morning when he came for Fajr Salah, he came and he was greeting the Prophet Wasallam, and the Prophet Wasallam looked into his eyes and he shaked his head. And the Prophet Wasallam said, the deed that you done last night Allah boasted to the malaika in the heavens about this, your, your, your actions. يُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَ And then here what the verse says, وَمَنْ يُوْقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ The one who protects the greed of his nafs, of his desires, 
when your desires tell you, no, don't do it. No, it's too much. Don't do it. Tomorrow, Wamai Yuka, whoever overpowers and protects his nerves not to convince him. And you, 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 you overpower it. For humul muflihun. Qad aflahal mu'minun. For ulaika humul muflihun. Allah says, those are the successful ones. Subhanallah, respected listeners. This is, you know, such beautiful stuff. Let me just come to one more, mention one more. The last rakat that we read, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, listen to those verses very carefully. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. O oh people, O oh you that have believed, la tulhikum amwalukum wala awladukum an dhikrillah. Do not let your wealth and your children destroy you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La tulhikum, the word halaka is used for destruction, to destroy, to crumble, to dilapidate to bring down to the ground. Do not let la tulhikum amwalukum wala awladukum your wealth and your children an dhikrillah. Wa man yaf'al dhalika fa'ulaika humul khasirun. And whoever allows that, then know that he is from amongst the ones that have lost greatly. Wa anfiqu and spend mimma razaqnaakum that which we have nourished and given you, your risk, which we have sustained you. وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ Before أَيَّأْتِيَ That the time will come or the time comes أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتُ When the death is at your doorstep فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي And then the far. Now you say, now you wake up. Now you have realized. Now you want to do good. Death is at the door. The angel of death is knocking. He wants permission to come in. Allah has granted him the permission. Your soul is already ex exiting from your body. Time is up. فَيَقُولَ رَبِّي لَوْلَا أَخَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ Ya Allah, give me time. Just give me a few minutes. I want to go back and do the right thing. What does it say? وَلَيْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا إِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهَا وَلَن The word لَن in Urdu هَرْجِزْ نَهِ That is the meaning of this word. لَن هَرْجِزْ نَهِ And we know this means never, impossible. وَلَيْ يُؤَخِّرَ اللَّهُ نَفْسًا Allah will never give any soul time when the time has come. It's time up. And Allah is all aware of what we do. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding.